So Simga, it's a company that I didn't really think that I have any interest in until I essentially tried their whole lineup from the EW200 to the EA1000. And basically I got a lot of interest now because of it, but I wanted to try a single IEM for longer than a demo session. So when SimGot reached out to me for a review tour unit, I was like, yeah, set it in. So what I have here is the SimGot EW200, a $40 IEM. Now is it good? Let's just not waste any more time. Without further ado. So hi guys, it's the boy Ralph and we're going to talk about the SimGod EW200, which is a $40 single dynamic driver IEM. And this is going to be a bit of an interesting IEM because there's a lot of IEMs, even considering in the sub $20 bracket. We're talking the Tangzu Warner, Sano Zero, uh, Truth Earhola, even. And there's even the QBC HVB. There's even the bullet style IEMs like the Quarks, the Tanya. What makes this worth more compared to the IEMs that costs cheaper than this? First, I'm going to showcase the unboxing of this. So let's talk about the box. So as you can see here, the EW200 is labeled as the maze. I think it's going to be like some sort of code name, like with the EA1000 being called Fermat. On the box itself, it has some details. So on the back, there is the frequency response of the IEM, along with the targets that is being compared against it, like the Harman 2016 target and SimGot's own classic target. So once you remove the cover, you are essentially met with a more understated box with a gold SimGot logo on top of it. Once you pop that open, you are essentially met with the IEMs themselves along with the accessory box at the side of it. Once you open the box under the IEMs, you have some sort of instruction manual on how to insert the IEMs, how to wear the IEMs themselves, and we also have the cable itself. And lastly, on the accessories box, you have a pouch bag and a set of clear ear tips or white ear tips. If there's one thing that I can comment on for the unboxing experience of the EW200, it's pretty neat. It doesn't waste a bunch of space. It's neatly packaged and overall it just feels a bit more premium compared to the lower sub bracket of IEMs. Like for example with the 7 hz zero, you're just met with the IEMs and suddenly the ear tips is a bit, you know, it's inside a plastic bag. But on the e 200 you see that it's all neatly packaged and it's actually well thought out and it just gives a bit more of a premium feel to it. It's as if it has taken a lot of care on the unboxing itself so that it's nice for the consumer. Now let's talk about the build design and comfort. So in terms of its build, it's actually pretty nice. Metal build feels pretty confident when you try to hold it in your hands. It's pretty nice as well. It has a very thin and sleek profile on it. So when I tried it on my ears in terms of comfort wise, it's actually pretty nice. It's actually pretty slim even. So this is something that I'm very comfortable wearing for longer sessions. I don't think most people will have any complaints on its fit unless your ears are too small or there's some weird geometry on your ear canals. I don't think there's that much issue here. And the cable is actually pretty nice. Soft, it's pliable, and it's not something I expect that will have a lot of curls unless you somehow jam your cables pretty much in without any sense of care whatsoever. Please learn how to roadie wrap or the over under method. I'll probably make a video on that. The only thing that is kind of all right on the accessories is the ear tips. It's just some simple clear ear tips. And while it's fine, I think I could recommend investing in some aftermarket ear tips for improved fit obviously and maybe some changes in its sound quality but more likely the fit will improve so in a nutshell builds amazing the only thing that's all right is essentially the ear tips now let's just go straight to subjective sound or sound 
impressions. So, what do I think about the SimGod EW200? Let's talk about the base of the SimGod EW200. So, on the base on the EW200, uh, it's actually a really solid uplift compared to the sub $20 bracket. Now, it's not a base head IEM. I don't think it's a base head IEM. In fact, this is actually more of a vocal focused IEM. I'll talk more about that later. But essentially, the bass is not really going to be the most upfront. But it has really nice sense of dynamics. So what do I mean by dynamics? Well, in terms of the drum sets, I seem to notice that relative to its price point, it actually gives off a bit more punch, a bit more heft on the sensation of the drums. Kick drums has a little bit more push into it rather than being something that's a bit pillowy by comparison. On the EDOI 200, it's actually leaning towards a tighter and a bit stronger bass. Even though it's not the most bass head level of bass, it's not a boomy type of bass, it's a bit more clean in that regard. But with that said, it's actually a really welcome quality compared to other IEMs that are a bit more on the bright neutral side of things. Because sometimes on those bright neutral set of IEMs, they may not have the base quality that will even satisfy me as someone who's listening to a lot of drums being played around. It's pretty nice that a set like the EDOE 200, even though it's a bit lean in the bass, it still has the drum sets come through the mix. I think that's a really nice quality on that. Now let's go for the treble first. On the treble of the EW200, it's a bit abrasive. It's not very spiky, but there are some instruments that I feel like has a bit of an extra texture into it. It's a bit, of, there's a bit of an extra edge. Well, it's not something that I will really find sibilant or a bit striking because I don't really think the cymbals on the EW200 is that fatiguing. Some moments in terms of the guitar and maybe even some female vocals where they're a bit on the high end, it's a bit in there. It's a bit in your face. While I don't think it's really a smooth IEM, it's also not necessarily bright, but it's a bit aggressive at times. So for the more treble sensitive, especially on that region, I'm gonna talk about frequency response later. This may be something that you need to look out for. And now for the mid-range. And this is what I'm most puzzled by. <laughs> Get it? Puzzled? Because maze? <laughs> Ugh, bad at jokes. <laughs> so the mid-range is honestly the most that I will probably complain about the EDOI 200. It's shouty. Vocals come across overly forward, regardless of gender. Male vocals, female vocals, I tested both of them. They felt like they're a bit too close to you compared to the rest of the the instruments or the rest of the parts of the band. When I'm listening to some tracks, the vocals really just seem to go in front and center. While guitar can be a bit pushed back, the bass and the drum set, yeah, it's really pushed back. They're still present, but the vocals is overly forward for my tastes, which is a bit of a problem because I listen to a lot of female vocals as well. And female vocals are pretty dominant in the upper mid specifically. So it comes across as very, very, very shouty. And not only that, there are some male vocals that also suffer from this problem. Like for example, uh, the lead vocalist in Monuments, he comes across a bit too strident for me. So the mid-range for me on the EDOI 200 is a bit of a very, very, very prominent thing. And it's not something that I really like. While it's not one of the worst, because I do think that it still sounds better than some other mid-ranges out there, I think it's not the most ideal for my tastes. In a nutshell, the EW200 sounds pretty decent, if I have to be really honest. Like, looking at the sound signature as a whole, I don't think it's a glaring issue. But the mid-range is a deal breaker. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a deal breaker for most people. So I think that's something that you're going to look out upon. Now I guess I'm done talking with the tonality of the EW200. Now I'm going to talk about the technical performance. So I already talked about its dynamics or the fact that even it's a bit lean, it actually has a bit more heft into it. Let's talk about its detail retrieval. 
which is actually pretty good. Uh, I think there's more texture that I could get compared to the sub 20 bracket. So I think it's a pretty nice uplift in terms of that region. And also that carries into its stage performance. Stage is a bit more open sounding and imaging is a bit more precise. So as a result, I can pretty much separate the guitar, the vocals, the drum sets, and even some parts of the drum sets. The only bit of issue is that because of the upper mids, the vocals are a bit too strong or in your head at times. So it's not also one of the most ideal, but I do think that it's pretty capable on the staging front so it's not one of the worst out there i think it's pretty good and that's the in terms of timbre i think that's the aspect that is the least upgraded it's not a huge leap it's a bit of an improvement there's improvements in its texture and it's i don't know quote unquote realism it's not a big factor and there are some people who actually find it to be a bit worse. But overall, in terms of its technical performance, I think it's mostly a pretty good sizable amount of upgrade. And tonality-wise, I think it's pretty decent. So yeah, I think that's what I could say about its subjective quality. Now I'm going to talk about the objective sound or frequency response analysis. Let's go. So. Let's talk about first the EDOI 200 compared to what I perceive as neutral. As you can see here, compared to the neutral target, there is a bit of elevation at 2 kHz to 3 kHz. Now, most IEMs I've seen has an elevation somehow at 1 kHz to 2 kHz. I don't usually mind that, but the elevation from 2 kHz to 3 kHz, that's going to be a bit abrasive. That's what I mean when there's a bit of a boost in the upper mids. It's boosted by essentially 3 decibels. It also gets indicated on the graph right here. And that's the region where I think female vocals usually have a sense of placement on. So there's a bit more in this region. There's enough more that's going to be noticeable. It's going to affect its stage somewhat. Now it's going to be a bit too strong on your head. And combined with the fact that there's a bit less lower mids, because it's a bit of a bright leaning set, I would say, there's going to be a bit of a strong contrast between the lower mids and the upper mids, which could cause some shoutiness, especially if you try to boost the volume so that the lower mids doesn't really sound as thin. And the result of that is that the upper mids comes off as really, really, really shouty. This is something that you have to look out for if you want a more natural and smooth vocal presentation. Other than that, the boost at 4 to 6 kilohertz, that's what I mean where I say that it's a bit abrasive sometimes on the bite of the guitar or the edge and some grittiness on the female vocals. It's a bit of texture. Some people say that it affects the breathiness of the vocals and that's also kind of possible. So this is something that you're going to look out for if you're a bit sensitive on that region. Other than that, it's relatively fine. Just some nitpicks here and there that is a bit out of what I prefer. And that's going to be a bit of a deal breaker because usually if it's relatively close on what I perceive as neutral, I would generally like it. In this case, even though I am kind of fine with it, it's not going to be one of the best that I've heard, tonally speaking. I think that's it for frequency response analysis. Now I'm going to talk about comparisons. So let's start with its more direct comparison, which is not the Zero Red, not yet. I'm going to talk about the Truth Ear Critical Zero Blue. Yes, the blue one, the one that is similar to the Harmon Target. I think the Zero has the same problems as the EWE 200 in its upper mids and lower treble, but the Zero has a bit of a bass bump. So on some genres of music like EDM, the Zero is actually a bit capable. If you're into EDM and you want a bit of a thumpy bass boost, the Zero may be a better option for you compared to the Edo 200, which may come across as thin or lacking or anemic by comparison. But I think I prefer the Edo 200 more because of, well, a few things. Number one is the fit of the Zero. The Edo 200 fits better on my ears. But second is that I never find the Zero 
to be pretty open sounding. It's a bit closed in even for the IM in its price range. So the EW200 has a better presentation of width or a better perception of width. And the Zero's imaging could have been good but it's affected by its upper mids increase. While I think the Zero has a bit of a better imaging than the Edoi 200, it's also a bit in your face as well. It's a bit too centered on my head as well. As a result, combined with a more claustrophobic presentation of the stage width, I think the Edoi 200 is a bit of a better option. And also that it's kind of cheaper anyway. So it's $40 versus $50. Personally, I think the Edoi 200 gets the win. Now I compare it to the Truth Air Skinical Zero Red. As you can see here, the Zero Red and the Edo 200 has a similar base response. Nothing much changed here other than the fact that the Zero Red actually has a bit more lower mids, which relates to male vocals having a lot more body. Not only that, there is not as much upper mids on the Zero Red compared to the EW200. As you can see here, from 2 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz, the Zero Red just comes down pretty nicely while the EW200 still has that elevation going on. And because of that, I find the Zero Red to be a bit more neutral sounding, a bit smoother actually. It has better vocal placements for me. I think because of its recession, the imaging on the Zero Red is actually a bit better even though it's still not as perceptually spacious as the Edoi 200. I think the Zero Red, honestly, is a bit more preferable for me for longer listening sessions, even if the fit is not as good because it's not as abrasive, it's smoother, the vocals is more natural sounding, and also the guitar is a bit more correct sounding. The only thing that people will complain about the Zero Red is that it's a bit too smooth. So it's not as airy as the Edo 200, which is why some people would prefer the Edo 200 more than the Zero Red, aside from its fit. But personally, if you ask me, I prefer the Red, not really because of my t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, but it's because it has a safer tonality for my ears. Smoother, nicer, yeah, that's why. One more, one more comparison, one more comparison. The 7 Hertz sound notes 02. It's cheaper than the EDOI 200. And I would admit that the 02 is not as technically capable as the EDOI 200. But like the Zero Red, it is smoother, like very smooth. It's not fatiguing at all. And it also has a lot more bass compared to the EDOI 200. Now the Zero 02 is actually a bit more bass head focused compared to the original 7 Hz Zero. But for me, I think it's a bit friendlier for newbies to buy compared to the EDOI 200, which is a bit bright leaning. The Zero 2 is a bit more forgiving for most people because of the fact that it's bassier, but also the fact that it's actually smoother. In fact, it may be a bit too smooth for some people. But the Zero 2 for me is a more preferred pick over the Edo 200. It depends on who you are. If you really like the bright signature of the Edo 200, Edo 200 it is. If you want a more relaxed signature, Zero 2. That's your decision to make. Now, I think that's it for the comparisons. So, is the EW200 worth it? I think it has a spot in the market, considering that it is a solid uplift in technical performance compared to its sub $20 brethren. Personally, it's not going to be an IM that I'm going to reach for, and it's honestly not an IM that I'm going to buy. With that said, I think for a certain type of person, especially for people who really want an in-your-face vocal presentation, the Edo 200 is pretty capable of giving you that experience. And not only that, it will probably even give you more than what you have thought. Like its bass response being a bit more punchy and dynamic, resolution being a bit more separated and cleaner, and the staging being a bit more open and a bit more accurate. For me, it's alright, but it's not something I'm going to reach for. So I guess that's it for my own thoughts. So yeah. Comment down below about your own experience of the Edoi 200. Ask your questions. I am free to answer any one of those if I can. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.